Killarney is hands down one of my favorite places to go. It's a world-class sea kayaking destination and an equally epic canoe tripping and hiking destination. So if it wasn't on your radar before, put it on your bucket list now. For this paddling guide, I've hooked up with Ted East, the owner of Killarney Outfitters, because no one knows the area better or has been responsible for helping more people experience the backcountry of the area than Ted and his family. But before we dive right into it, please subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already and hit the little notification bell and check out the Paddle Tales series, which is a really cool series that goes on amazing paddling adventures to some of the best paddling destinations in the world. There's a link in the description box down below. So without further ado, enjoy the paddling guide to Killarney. Colony, Ontario is located on the northwestern end of Georgian Bay, which is part of Lake Huron, a great lake. We're about a four and a half hour drive from the city of Toronto and about a four hour drive from Sioux, Michigan. Colony, Ontario is a unique village from 1820 until 1962. The village was landlocked. It's a true port community in that the harbor both opens east and west into Lake Huron. The village initially was a you know, fur trading, lumbering town um, with, with heavy commercial fishing. The local fishermen uh, catch the fish in the morning, clean it and cook it in their fish and chip store. Uh, same day, it's, it, it's, it's really great. We're located just a few minutes drive from the waterfront where we operate Killarney Outfitters. Killarney um, is considered by many the paddle capital of, uh, of Canada. The Lacloche Mountain Range, which forms the Killarney Provincial Park, is arguably the best canoe tripping park in Ontario. High uh, mountain vistas, crystal clear lakes, a well thought out portaging system, and then our Georgian Bay coastline is considered by kayakers the best freshwater kayaking in North America. It's all crown land. You can camp wherever you wish, and the water, again, is clear, and some of the best fishing in the Great Lakes. Canoeing out there is also great, because you're not portaging. So now a canoeist can bring a few more creature comforts, like a cooler and ice. Here at the Outfitters, we rent state-of-the-art ultralight Kevlar canoes of different lengths and our sea kayaks, our proper coastal expedition boats, uh, either 17 or 22 feet long, and meant for long overnight expeditions. The ultralight Kevlar canoes within the park are key because some of the most beautiful lakes are at the end of a 3,000 meter portage. So days of carrying a 72 pound Grumman canoe across a portage of that length are over. Within the Kalani Provincial Park, it's almost a necessity to have a canoe. Some of the lakes you can uh, splash your kayak, but if you have intentions of going from lake to lake, the portage trails are not uh, conducive for carrying a kayak. Whereas on Georgian Bay, you can't paddle out there with a, with a toy kayak or a recreational kayak. You, know, you need a full-size expedition kayak. Paddling our, our Georgian Bay shoreline, our, our Crown Land shoreline, it's predominantly around a, a large, magnificent island called Philip Edward. Both canoeing and kayaking is equally fun and safe, although kayakers uh, have claimed it to themselves and regard it as the best freshwater kayaking in North America. Well, the benefits of taking a kayak out there that um, if you're an experienced rough water kayaker, you can perhaps um, expose yourself more to the onslaught of Lake Huron, whereas a canoeist will have to stay in behind the Great Barrier Reef, reef we call it. The hard southern shoreline of Philip Edward Island has an outer barrier of islands and shoals which protect you from the onslaught of Georgian Bay. One of the great benefits of a canoe out there is that you can bring more stuff. You can bring bigger tents, you can bring chairs to sit in, you can bring coolers and ice and fresh foods. There's no portaging involved, so uh, senior citizens still allows them to go canoe camping. To paddle in the park, you don't have to be um, an expert canoeist or an expert kayaker, but you have to have uh, some basic knowledge of how to, 
how a canoe works. Often each summer, um, people for, for the very, very first time, they go out in a canoe and they flip it over and all their stuff goes to the bottom of the lake. Always wear a personal flotation approved device and just be safe, be smart about it. To paddle our Georgian Bay coastline around Philip Edward Island, it's not a place for beginners, not by themselves. Uh, a beginner with an experienced group, sure. It's one place where you have to be more cognizant of the weather forecast. You know, be aware of, of wind speeds and, and direction. Uh, be aware of the wildlife. Bring your garbage home and any other people's garbage you find too. Interior canoe tripping in Kalani Provincial Park is arguably the finest in Ontario. What makes the Clarny Park so unique is that it has the highest classification of a park in the Ontario system. It is classed as a wilderness park. So in comparison, if you take two large average size lakes, Algonquin and Killarney, Algonquin will have 30 campsites and we have four. One benefit of that, at night, the lake is a ring around the rosy of campfires burning. You, are, you, you really feel alone and isolated. On the other hand, because it is such a popular park, you have to make reservations five months in advance of the day of your departure. If you want to leave July 1st, you book February 1st. You really have to plan ahead of time. Having said that, because people make plans five months in advance, if you're diligent on the computerized park reservation system, and say, hey, let's check Killarney this weekend availability, and you turn your computer on and somebody's canceled, um, you can last minute get perhaps the nicest lake in the park. The campsites are all facilitated with thunder boxes, uh, toilets, and they're remarkably clean. It's a great park. The unique thing of, of sleeping overnight on the Philip Edward Island area, our, our crown land, Georgian Bay shoreline, is that um, as a Canadian citizen, it is federal land, crown land. You don't need a permit or a reservation. And if you are a non-resident of Canada and a guest of Clarny Outfitters and that we're providing you with shelter, then you are um, exempt from having to have a crown land camping permit. There are no designated campsites out there. You can camp anywhere you wish, and most likely spots already have a rock fire pit built. Often you're putting your tents on dark, smooth, pink granite rocks. So you have to have a collection of rocks at your tent corners to act as your tent pegs. That's the only trick. To access uh, the Cloney Park, it has five put-in access points. The main one, of course, is George Lake, where the park office is, but there's also access points at Carlisle Lake, Johnny Lake, Bell Lake, and at the far northwest corner of the park, there's a park permit office called Widjawa Lodge. To access Georgian Bay, there's only one access point, and that is uh, close by to the, the main park office. It's called the Chickenishing Creek Access Point, or as we locally refer to it, the Chick. Some of the, uh, the cool things about the Clowney Park is that mid canoe trip, you can hike on organized hiking trails to the top ridges, the highest points of the La Cloche mountain range. One, for example, is Silver Peak, and you enter it at the Bell Lake access point, you rent a canoe, paddle it about two and a half kilometers, park your canoe, get on the hiking trail, and hike to almost 2,000 feet above sea level. On a clear day, you can see well over 50 miles. The whole process as a day trip takes about six hours. Mid canoe trip, you can camp on Johnny Lake, Bell Lake, or David Lake, stay in one campsite for two nights in a row, and spend the day in the middle taking your family up for a picnic at Silver Peak. That's at the northeastern end of the park. More centrally located, via George Lake, you can paddle into a neighboring lake called Killarney Lake, either from Killarney Lake or Norway Lake or OSA Lake. Um, again, mid-canoe trip, stay in one campsite for two nights in a row is our recommendation, and then go hike the crack. Both of these hikes 
are on our hiking page on our website. One other place that you can visit mid canoe trip is the Basin Lake in the mountains, Topaz Lake. As you're portaging by, you can take a 10 minute break and stop off at Topaz Lake, go for a swim, jump off the cliff. It has spectacular visibility approaching 100 feet. Canoeing or kayaking out on Philip Edward Island on our Georgian Bay coast, there's no real special place. It's just mile after mile of exquisite vistas. Um, the highlights there are these massive shoreline blueberry patches. Some of them extend for 100 yards. Also the fishing. In many places where you camp, you can catch bass in the morning right off your campsite. There's no real hazards in the Kalani Park unless they're self-inflicted. For example, ignoring the marine forecast. The marine forecast is accurate, it's predictable, it's solid four days out. And, and if you ignore the fact that there's gonna be a south wind of 20 knots and you are downrange offshore too far and not sheltered by what we call our, our, our protected barrier reef, then you can get yourself in a pickle. Most important when you're camping in the park is to keep your campsite clean. Don't clean fish at your campsite. Go down the shoreline and clean your fish. Um, don't leave garbage lying around. If you follow the basic rules of um, storing your food in a clean container or away from your campsite, either hanging in a tree or buried in a hollow with brush on top, the bears in Kalani Park are not habitualized to humans like they are in Algonquin, for example. They don't have um, bear 101 school um, for the cubs to recognize what a food container looks like. If you find one in a blueberry patch, then leave him alone because he's on a mission. And one other thing perhaps, um, some of the high mountain ridges, the rocks can get slippery. So, you know, don't go hiking the ridges in flip-flops and you'll, you won't twist your ankle. The only main rule and regulation that the Clarny Park has, and due to its classification as a true wilderness park, there is a cannon bottle ban. And if there happens to be a fire ban, then when you check in to get your park permit, you have to show them that you physically have a stove. And always when you make the reservation, they want to know um, the color of your tent. There are many lakes in the park, Bell Lake, Johnny Lake, etc., cetera, um, that are spring fed. And because they're so underfished, they're teeming with bass and northern pike, etc. cetera. Uh, fishing on the Georgian Bay coastline, that's a whole new story. Um, it is arguably some of the best freshwater fishing in the Great Lakes. Perch, large and smallmouth bass, northern pike, and most likely the next record, world record muskie will come from that area too. Maybe not too accessible by canoe because these fish live in 100 feet of water, but our, our immediate area also has terrific downrig, downrigging fishing for uh, lake trout, Chinook salmon and steelhead rainbow trout. Killarney has some terrific accommodation, notably uh, Killarney Mountain Lodge and the Sportsman's Inn. Both of them are quite luxurious and some of their accommodation is priced accordingly, although both have lesser accommodation that is reasonably priced. There's also a local private campground called Roche Rouge, Red Rock Campground and it's a very simple campground, but most of the sites are on the, you know, the Killarney Bay, Georgian Bay shoreline. And perhaps most important, if you are a guest of Killarney Outfitters renting equipment from us, we have a magnificent camping field that is very private, it's groomed, um, it's the size of a football pitch, and camping there is free of charge for our customers. There's quite a few options for dining in Killarney. Uh, the most famous is Herbert's Fish and Chips. They are the commercial fishermen. They catch the fish in the morning, clean it, and cook the fish, you know, that same day. There's also a good hamburger chip wagon called Aunt Bee's, um, a little breakfast and lunch restaurant called Gateway, and the general store in town is well stocked uh, with snack food. And oh, most important, we have a liquor and beer store combination. On, it actually even has a dock. Uh, there are two fine dining establishments in, in Killarney. Uh, Killarney Mountain Lodge, 
Um, has a magnificent dining room and a large outdoor licensed patio. And second would be the Sportsman's Inn. They also have a, a, a great licensed outdoor patio and a, a, a second story dining room overlooking the Killarney Harbour. Here in, here in Killarney, unfortunately, um, no one does any fully escorted guided trips. Here at Killarney Outfitters, we out fit people to the fullest extent so they can do a self-guided trip, um, including uh, uh, perhaps a 12 to 20 page written description itinerary of your route lake by lake by lake, historic information, places to stop and see on the way by, and our staff here um, do everything possible to um, educate you on how the tents erected, how the stoves work. All we can't do is teach a beginner how to canoe. There are um, some companies you can find on the internet that do do occasional guided canoe trips in the park, but they're you know, few and far between. To highlight the equipment that we rent, we've made a point of providing the best boats we can access. Um, all our ultralight Kevlar canoes retail around $4,000, um, but most important, We've paddled them and have chosen the best paddling canoes that we think exist in the market. The same with our kayaks. Uh, our fiberglass tandem kayak is made by Seaward in, in, in British Columbia, um, a, a Seaward Passat G3. It's 22 feet long fiberglass um, and quite frankly, arguably the best of its kind in the world. If you're an expedition in Antarctica, this is the boat you would be sitting in. Our, our gear we rent individually, so if you need a, an extra tent, a stove, you can find all of that on our website, ClawneyOutfitters.com. And again, our specialty is complete outfitting. All of our two-person rental tents, for example, are actually MSR Mother Hubba three-man tents. And this allows two people to have some elbow room in their tent. And from our stainless steel cook sets, to even the hand saw to cut wood. Um, it's the finest equipment that we can package uh, that's available in the market. For more information on planning a canoe trip in Killarney, we really recommend you go to our website, killarneyoutfitters.com. It has a wealth of information on the park. Most important, one page in particular, you'll find the top navigation bar. We have electronic Killarney park map which you can zoom in and zoom out of. And beside it, we have our trip planning section. And the trip planning section has direct access to Ontario Parks Reservations and all the information you need to plan a wonderful canoe or kayak trip in Killarney.